Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you're, you have yeah. a PhD in, in uh, pharmacology. pharmacology. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you you understand science pretty well, yeah. and you're you're also very uh, savvy on being able to examine research studies in general, especially yeah. scientific ones, yeah. Yeah. and kind of dissect it. And so. You've done that a lot. We've had a lot of discussions. I want you to kind of point out because you can do a much better job than I can on this. Mm-hmm. But explain to the audience some of the flaws that we see in research studies that often yeah. don't mm-hmm. get yeah. mentioned. So one of the um, one of the uh, opportunities that I've had uh, working at the the medical school um, is that uh, one of my coworkers is um, is actually a world expert in evidence-based medicine. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, and I've now worked there for 17 years. And so I've, um, I've had the benefit of his expertise and actually learning a lot from him over the years about evidence-based medicine, which, you know, the whole, the term evidence-based gets thrown around a lot mm-hmm. in the fitness industry. Um, and people talk about evidence-based, but they don't really understand what it means um and i would even say that um a lot of our if you're a basic scientist like like i what i am and that's how i was trained um i can look at the science that's related to whatever topic i was working on which was you know molecular biology um and read an article and i'm familiar with the methods and so i can look at a at a paper and say yeah it's good it's not you know um but when you get into human subjects research, it's it's a whole different ball game, um, and understanding what evidence means in that sense is very different. And I think it's it's difficult for people, um, even our basic science faculty, if you're not trained um, in you know how to look at human subject studies. Um, the types of like you know clinical studies, um, you know, uh, I sort of it, it, the 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 number of like confounding variables and you know um, and and things that can affect results, uh, the number of of uh, the sample size, the number of people mm-hmm. that you would have to look at in order to get a result that's actually valid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is the design of the study um, appropriate? There's a there's a whole lot of different ways to to do human subjects research from observational studies which tend to be kind of, you know, seen as kind of the bottom rung in terms of evidence, but mm-hmm. that's not always the right. case. Before and, you go any further, I want to just jump in real fast because yeah. I want the audience to understand why we're bringing this up. Yeah. Okay, it's not just to discuss yeah. research no, for no. the sake of it yeah. because you're, you're knowledgeable yeah. on that. Um, it's because there's oftentimes, pretty much every, every time I do a post, people say, oh, this is not evidence-based or the research mm-hmm. doesn't show this or the research shows this instead. Mm-hmm. And... You have to look at all of the research. You have to look at all the science, and you can't just take certain studies. Oh, here's the conclusion the authors came up with, and mm-hmm. they did you know human subject studies, yeah. and they had 12 people in this group and 11 people in this, and here's what they found. Yeah. What we're trying to point out to you guys listening is that there's a lot of flaws in a lot of the research, so much so that you have to be careful what you interpret from it. Mm-hmm. And this is this is why we're discussing yeah. this. So, keep so going. It, it's yeah. So I think for your average person who doesn't spend their time looking at you know scouring the literature or looking through PubMed or reading those types of studies, um, you know it, it's very hard to interpret the results of a study. Mm-hmm. And so um, and then you know and 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 so when people say uh, you know oh where is you know uh, you're you're not um, citing any any studies well if you look at the literature um most studies are done with very small numbers of people and and then you your your controls if you will so when you're comparing populations usually when you're doing a a study and you're doing an intervention like i don't know some kind of exercise and you want to see the effect uh, it might have on a population you have studies, you know, every study is done with a slightly different population and slightly different, you know, different age groups, different number of peoples, different settings, the interventions are not standardized and so on. And so when you've looked at one study, you've looked at one study. Right. And so, you know, to make generalizations based on a single study Mm. is, is not appropriate. And so, 
you know, the way to the, the way that you would look at this would be um, potentially looking at systematic review. So systematic reviews are, you know, are, is, is a more rigorous process by which you essentially look at a series of studies. So you, um, you identify studies that fit particular criteria and you exclude studies that don't fit that criteria that weren't done properly and so on and so forth. But even that is, is very difficult to do when it comes to a lot of the sort of exercise mm -hmm. science. Um, well, they have, often have to adjust those parameters just to get enough a significant studies. amount of studies. So it's yeah. not like, oh, we found one study. Let's say, okay, yeah. well, this isn't going to be a good review. Yeah. They have to sometimes broaden the... So, so the searches are, are generally very broad because you want to start by capturing as many as you can and then you start to whittle them down based on the exclusion criteria. And one of the things that's interesting is that, that oftentimes in systematic reviews, you start with, you know, you initially identify... 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 articles. Mm -hmm. And by the time you're done and you get down to the ones that you're actually going to compare, you're down to a dozen or a handful. Mm -hmm. So that already tells you that there's a lot of research out there that's not well done. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and, and then if you don't have the expertise to look at how these studies are done, um, it's very hard to judge. Is this, was this study done properly? Was this intervention... Um, you know, they're not randomized, they're not blinded, which is sort of the gold standard, uh, because you can't blind it. And, you know, if somebody's mm -hmm. asking you to do a particular exercise, you know what they're asking you to do. And so right. you, you can't do, you know, um, a randomized, double blind, placebo control trials, right. which is sort of the gold standard, at least in clinical medicine, um, on, when you're doing this kind of stuff. And so um, it's very hard to judge the quality of a study because number one, you don't have the expertise to know, well, is this the appropriate study design? So oftentimes the study designs are not appropriate. So what you end up finding oftentimes is that um, by the time you, you've you reviewed these articles, you've compared them, you've looked at all of the, um, the, the way the design was done and so on and so forth, um, you end up with... Um, and the inability to really come to a conclusion. Mm. So most systematic reviews of, um, you know, what was I looking at recently? Um, I was looking at um, uh, studies of uh, whole body cryotherapy, oh, right? Yeah, right? So that's right. a very popular thing mm -hmm. these days. Um, but you look at studies and they're all done different amounts of time, different temperatures, mm -hmm. you know, uh, at different times after a particular exercise. Mm -hmm. well, that's so, where the reproducibility issue is. Right. And so, yeah, so you don't, um, so you, you, you don't reproduce them. A lot of, a, a lot of research is not reproduced. Um, and so, you know, when people say, oh, you know, this study showed, well, maybe that study showed, but maybe if you did that study 20 times yeah. mm -hmm. over, you, what you end up is with a result that's really not significant. Right. And so right. a lot of these systematic reviews will say that, that there is just the, you know, very low level evidence exactly. in support of whatever, you know, they were looking for. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out this other one. I think you'll find it just as informative.